Hey everyone, and welcome back to Studio 3B. In my last video, I talked to you about how to rip CDs three different ways from Mac OS or Windows. My apologies to those Windows users. My uh, exact audio copy tutorial was uh, pretty much worthless because I didn't get it to work properly. So I wanted to reach out to you guys and show you that I did spend a little time getting familiar with the EAC program yet again. It's been uh, many years since the last time I used it. So it was very, you know, in my memory somewhere, but I, I had to take a little time to kick up the dust and relearn this program. It is really the best program to use for ripping CDs. I know there's a lot of other solutions out there that manage your libraries better and, and, and may have ripping software in there, but this is pretty much the de facto standard for getting an accurate archival of your audio CDs. So in case, you know, God forbid, you know, something happened to your CD collection, you would have a digital version exactly replicated of the CD. And you could, you know, possibly even burn a copies of that if you would want to, or you could just set up a streaming service from your library to, to stream these CDs to like Rune or, you know, whatever streaming player you have. So yeah, let me just tell you some of the basics. This is more of a beginner guide because uh, I don't get into the advanced features of EAC to rip my CDs, but I could do an accurate result with just a few simple steps. Okay, the first thing you need to know is to configure, there's a, there's a feature in here called Accurate Rip, and that is a way of setting the offset of your CD-ROM, which is different from CD-ROM to CD-ROM to be accurate, to know when exactly songs will start in your CD. This is my understanding. So uh, accurate rip is important because if you don't configure this correctly, you may miss a few uh, milliseconds or even a second of your first song uh, when you're ripping and, and the gaps may be off or something along those lines. So you really want to get a perfect rip of your CD by getting accurate rip to work. So when you first open up EAC after installation, Okay, you need to select a CD for your first one that is a popular CD that is more likely to be in their accurate RIP database and something that wasn't highly recent. So I went and I uh, chose in my original video, I had Vegas by Crystal Method. And apparently that CD was not in their database because when I opened EAC and I inserted the CD, it said, cannot find accurate rip results. Please insert another disc. So um, I went back into my collection and I got one that I used in a long time ago in my other video, uh, Black Sabbath Master of Reality. This is a old album, but it's a very popular one. So this is in their database. So what I did was I fired up EAC and I can't reproduce this for you in screen sharing because um, I'd, I'd have to clear my accurate rip result. So what you do when you first open up EAC is you insert a CD that's popular and not so recent. And it will say configuring accurate rip. This will take about five seconds. There's a little pop up. OK, you, you click OK and it literally does take like five seconds. It just detects the gap in your CD-ROM compared to what their database says, particularly for the exact bits of the CD. So it's a little technical, but just basically make sure you get this accurate rip thing set up properly. And to confirm that you do have that, go to EAC Drive Options, click OK. And if you go to Offset Speed, use accurate rip with this drive should be checked. OK. So that, that will show you that you have accurate rips set up. Another hiccup that I had was getting the metadata. So what I didn't realize is they have other libraries that you can download besides FreeDB. So what you do is you go to database, okay, get CD information from remote metadata provider. The default uh, would ask you to log in and give uh, and prompt you for a free trial of FreeDB. Okay, so that's not what I wanted to do. So if you go to EAC metadata options, actually there's a whole drop down full of other engines to use for a database to download your the metadata about the CD, such as the track names, the track numbers, and the artwork. So a very popular one that I prefer to use is called Music Brains. So it's really it's built right in with EAC now. So go ahead and select Music Brains. And now you'll see that over here, this Music Brains metadata plugin. So now if you go database, get CD information from remote metadata provider, it will just give you this little warning. Do you really want to continue? Well, yeah, you know, I didn't, 
I didn't set this up. I already downloaded it. So I'm just going to continue. And it goes to the to the server and it gives you these options. These are potential matches that it found. So what I did was I basically looked, I moused over this first CD and I saw that the tracks did coincide with the songs and the track numbers were matching uh, which songs are which. So um, I did select the first one. Uh, there are other options here, but they're probably gonna give you the wrong track names. So I selected the first one and I clicked okay. Then it says, do you want to search for cover images now? I clicked yes. So I just clicked large images. I don't really have a problem with having large images. And I waited for some artwork to download and it downloads quite a bit of artwork. So I looked at my CD cover and I discovered that the closest one that I saw from the first couple to looking like the actual CD cover was this one right here. Um, that looks mostly like the CD cover I have. So I just double click that. And boom, there is my CD cover. Now, one critical thing to do before you get started is uh, do the configuration wiz wizard. It might pop up when you first install the program, but make sure you run configuration wizard and, and you click next, you click, select your CD-ROM. It just has to have reading potential. So it doesn't have to be a writer necessarily, but this one is a Blu-ray disc writer and reader and everything like that. So it's got all the features. You click next. I always click, I prefer to have accurate results because if you're gonna go as far as using this program, definitely go for accuracy over speed. And you click next. It does this auto detection. This is something called accurate stream. This is something different than accurate rip, but it's something along the lines of just getting the bit perfect results from your particular CD-ROM. So let's let this test run. Uh, and you want to make make sure this is a step you run before ripping your first CD. Okay, so that's completed. Uh, click next here. This is the best drive. If you have more than one drive, it may it may suggest other drives. I have not seen that yet. It's configured. Okay, and then this is a critical step that I missed in my last video. Also, you could select FLAC right here in the configuration wizard. That's the one you want to use for archival. Uh, reason being that the FLAC is lossless, so it is not going to lose any of the CD information and it's good for, like I said, archival. And it's also perfect for playback on most computers and systems. MP3 and WMA are short, shorter files. They are lossy files. I would not go through the effort of ripping in exact audio copy if you're simply going to MP3. So just go ahead and use the FLAC. WMA lossless is another option. If you're a Windows user, I don't understand why someone would want to use that because uh, FLAC is the universal standard and it's pretty much accepted on all operating systems today. So just choose FLAC and then hit next. And it automatically configures the FLAC encoder for you. Um, then it has this naming convention. So, you know, how do you want to name your files? I'm just going to leave it unchanged for now. Then it says you're done. Uh, do you want to configure EAC to, for beginners or an expert. So like I said, this is more of a beginner video. I'm just gonna leave it on beginner options. This is not a deep dive into all the features of EAC, just basically how to get your library set up using this program. So, okay, so now we're all set. So now you can go ahead and rip this CD. So what do you do? So WAVE will rip the CD into WAVE format, which is uncompressed and that's very large files. Uh, I don't recommend doing that for archival unless you have a, a massive amounts of, of storage space. I would highly recommend using the compressed option. This is going to rip it to FLAC. It selects your folder where you want to put your library. So for me, I'm just going to put it here. However, um, for further music library management, see my other video about Music Brain Spokard and how to manage your library and or organize metadata and put that in a folder where you could do that. But this this is just an example. I'm gonna put it here. Once you click OK, it starts ripping your CD. Uh, I already started this rip, but I'm gonna just say overwrite with new content, yes to all, okay. That's all you need to do. Um, every other rip after this, you don't need to go through all the configuration steps. So you would just simply insert the CD and click the CMP button to start ripping after you select your location. So. 
what you do is you just sit here patiently and you wait for the CD to rip. And this is a one-time thing. As long as you don't lose the files that it's creating, you could have them forever. So you just patiently sit there and wait for the CD to rip. If there are scratches or any imperfections in the CD, you will see is error correction. Start clicking some red squares in here. That's something that program will do naturally to overcome some errors in the CD and try to fix them to be perfect. When the CD is done ripping, you will get a log of the results and we'll sit around and wait for that, but I will fast forward to that so you don't have to wait in this video. Okay, as you can see here on this track, I'm starting to get some error correction going on as I did on the previous track. Um, you can see the red error correction bars here going across. Hopefully it can overcome these errors and continue to rip. If it's perfect and everything works okay, it should say copy okay, even though you get errors. So let's see how this goes. Okay, this took just over an hour, about an hour and 10 minutes. Um, if you click OK, you can get the log window here to pop up and uh, it will show you all you need to see about error correction and all the things that it did. It looks like it had some hiccups along the way, but it seemed to resolve most of the tracks according to their database. Um, so the first four were uh, solid and uh, the, the, uh, the next one was a little iffy, but it still got the file. And then the last couple were pretty good too uh, with some error correction involved. So look at all the tracks. You can see which ones had some issues and where. Uh, just click uh, save log if you want to save these log files. And you can save them to your hard drive and keep track of you know what the status of each one of these rips were. But once you do that, click OK and you're done. You're ready to rip your next CD. So take your time with this. It's going to take a long time if you have a substantial CD collection. It, for me, it took several weeks to get through it. Um, you know, you have to be consistent about it and just put a couple in a day and just pace yourself. So it's really worth it to archive your CD collection in case of disaster or the CDs get scratched or ruined. You have a backup. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. And please check back with us in the future for more videos or check all the other content on my channel. Thank you.